so these uh, uh, cores got me interested. Uh, I, I bought them for RF filters, but then I found out that some of these were uh, for chokes, for uh, RFI suppression and stuff, especially these uh, yellow and white ones, the yellow white code. And they had a really big one here. So here's a, here's a yellow and white one. So this is super heavy. Uh, it's only 40 cents, so I picked it up just for fun. Um, and then I got to thinking, I said, well, maybe I could use this as an RF ballon, right? A lot of, um, a lot of times you'll take your RG8 or whatever, RG59, RG58, and, and wrap it around here a few times, and then it'll keep any uh, RF that's on the outside of the coax from, from, from coming into the station. I thought, maybe that'd be, maybe it'd be good for, for something like that. And then I thought, well, I wonder if I can measure these things. So, um, so I have a setup here to measure things. Um, so while I was at the, the, the junk store last, uh, uh, everyone seemed to enjoy my video on the junk store. Um, so uh, I picked up some other uh, ferrite things uh, just for fun. So these are, these are supposedly iron core, but these are ferrite core. So ferrite is um, nickel or I forget now. Anyway, ferrite's a, a different thing than, than, than iron. Um, and uh, these are nice. These are nice big tubes. So you know, definitely RG58 will go through there. And I think maybe that 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 smaller RG8 stuff, RG8 X, you forget what the stuff's called. The the small RG8 will will go through there. Um, so I can imagine having a couple of these on the uh, on the feed line. And uh, yeah, that'd make a nice uh, that'd make a nice uh, RFI choke. Uh, and then they had some some little ones of, of similar diameter. Uh, I think these are the ones you generally see being sold as a kit, uh, uh, where you, you you can make up your own. You put heat shrink over them. Um, so I thought, well, let, let's see how these things do. Um, I also picked up some of these guys. So the last time I was uh, a few times a few trips ago, uh, I picked up one of these. And let me let me show you some things. I want to give the guy a plug. Uh, uh, I don't get many plugs on the. Uh, on the station, but let, let me give you a plug for this guy. All right, I don't give many uh, plugs, but I but I definitely want to give a plug to this guy because he was super nice to me. Um, so I have this Baofeng, and I bought this thing that goes in the back. Uh, as a little, I have it velcroed on there, my little piggyback, and it's an APRS uh, uh, TNC, and uh, it goes into the uh, into the radio. Uh, with a with a cable goes into the uh, into the earphone jack, and uh, as an option, you can get a little RFI choke for it. And so uh, I wanted a, a second choke, and um, so I, I bought that. And then I also bought a uh, uh, I also bought a, a a bigger one. So we'll, we'll talk about that later. But anyway, so back to the plug. Uh, so this this is from a company called. Uh, uh, let's see if you can see that. Uh, a company called uh, Mobile Linked, uh, spelled funny. Mobile Linked is a TNC3. So if you Google TNC3, uh, this will come up. And so the TNC3 is uh, a regular APRS TN. TN I'm not going to be talking about it in this video, but if you already know what they are, you know what they are. Um, but it's a TNC uh, that works with Apple. So for years and years and years, Apple was not couldn't play in the game. Um, and this is the first TNC that allows you to do uh, Bluetooth uh, to, a, to an Apple iPhone. Uh, and it works great. It works really, really good. Now, the, the, uh, the cable that I got went bad on me. Uh, you know, Chinese cables, they're not made <laughs> all that well. Um, so the, the cable went bad on me. So I, I asked the guy, you know, I said, hey, my cable went bad. Can you send me another one? He goes, oh, absolutely. Right? And so that's the kind of customer service you want, you know. It's absolutely not like, oh, did you check this or blah, blah, blah. Just like, absolutely, you know, I'll send one out immediately. Um, and uh, I went ahead and bought two of them. So uh, I, have a, uh, uh, I have a spare. And so on the spare, I wanted a another uh, ferrite bead. Uh, I bought this one from him, and I got this one at the junk store. So now I have a whole, I have a, a backup kit in case this one breaks for some reason. Um, so anyway, uh, shout out to him. Uh, thanks a lot. Great customer service. I like it when uh, companies take pride in their products and do the customer right. Okay, so back to the uh, back to the uh, ferrites. All right, so I have this little ferrite, big ferrite. So um, I also have a box of ferrites uh, that I've collected over the over the eons. <laughs> I guess I've I, my age now. I'm into the eons. Um, so let's go ahead and do some measurements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my sweep generator and let me hook this up here first. All right. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to be using my, uh, sorry for the camera work, I'm going to be using my, uh, uh, my generator here. And I'm going to have it set between 1 and 15 megahertz. It's going to be sweeping 1, 1 to 15 megahertz linearly. And then I'm going to display, be display, displaying that on the, uh, the Rigel scope there. And you can see there's a little bit of droop at higher frequencies. Um, and that is not due to the generator, that's due to the fixturing I have here. I just have some length of wire here, okay? And so that's adding a little bit of inductance and that causes the high frequency roll off. Um, so let me, uh, let me show you uh, how I'm gonna test things here, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first uh, do a reference. Uh, reference channel one, blah, 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 save. Okay, so I've saved a reference. Now, if I disconnect, you'll see that, that that stays there. And so our current measurement will be in this pink color and the, the saved one is in the, is, in, is in the white, so you can kind of compare the two, okay? Okay, I think that'll work okay if I don't trip over the tripod. Okay, so if I disconnect it, uh, is that in camera? Yeah, I have to hold it up a little bit, but yeah, it's in camera. You can see that it goes away. And then if I put it on here, now if I take one of those ferrite beads, let me, uh, let me take this ferrite bead here and I'll just put it over the clip, clip lead and then I'll attach those. Um, and you can see that the uh, picture changed, right? So that we're attenuating high frequency. We're not attenuating low frequency, but we are attenuating high frequency. That, so that's the test we're gonna be doing, okay? And so this isn't very convenient here, clip lead to clip lead. So I'm gonna put a wire in. I'm gonna put this length of wire in here and then I can put ferrite beads on this length of wire. But this length of wire is going to add inductance. So let me show you that. All right, so I'll put that length of wire in here. So it's about a, a eight inch piece of wire. And you can see that my, uh, my trace uh, is a little bit lower. So let's re-reference to that one. Okay, so now we're re-referenced to this, to this piece of wire. So now we can add things to it. So uh, I'm going to do that same thing. I'm gonna take this uh, inductor or this uh, ferrite bead. We'll put it on this new length of wire and stick it in here. We get, we get the same picture, okay? And if I, take, uh, if I take two of them and put them on, it should be better, right? And it got better. So that's the test we're gonna be doing, all right? Okay, so let's first start out uh, with uh, with these, with these long guys. Okay. I really like these long guys. They are, let me get a measurement for you. They are 50 millimeters long, uh, 20, 18 millimeters outside diameter and 10 millimeters inside diameter. Okay. So we'll put one of those on here and you can see that it's doing, it's doing pretty good. So again, this is one megahertz to 15 megahertz. And let's put two of them on. This is quite a bit of ferrite. Put two of them on. And it didn't get a whole lot better. It got a little bit better, but it didn't get a whole lot better. So uh, it, got, it got a slightly better, but this, there's diminishing returns, right? So would I put on the third one? No, probably not. It's probably all, well, I've got three of them, so let's put the third one on, but I don't think it's gonna do much. So I'll put three of them on here. And I mean, maybe I got a little bit better, but I mean, you wouldn't spend the money on it, right? I mean, I only paid 30 cents for these, but. Um, okay, so those, those are the really big ones. So let's try the, uh, uh, let's try these, these out. These are, these are 28 millimeters long, 15 millimeters in outside diameter, and eight millimeters inside diameter. And so let's put one of those on here. See how it does. There's one, almost the same as the long ones. Uh, put two of them on. Eh. Put three of them on. So yeah, kind of the same type of thing. Let's compare compare sizes. Here's a really weird. This is on a camera. Um, so here's two of these, and here's one of these. So it's about the same size. So let's let's kind of do an A B on those. Okay. So here's the solid long one. 
solid long one is there. And okay, got that memorized in your head. And then here's two of the other ones. So these are a little bit better. Two, two of these is a, is a little bit better than the other one, but not a whole lot. All right, so that's those. So then I was curious about these little, uh, these little clip-on ones, right? These little clip-on ones are 10 millimeters in outside diameter, five millimeters inside diameter, and they are 20 millimeters long. So let's, uh, let's stick one of those on there. And uh, yeah, not, not great. It's okay. Um, so I figured, okay, I've got this. I got this nice, uh, nice long one. This long one's gonna be great. It's gonna be so much better. And it's awful. <laughs> it's just terrible. So you get what you pay for, right? I guess. I mean, I didn't pay for any of these, but um, so not much for them. I think I paid 40, 40 cents for these. Um, but this one has no name markings on it. The long one has no name markings on it. The little short one is actually ferrite. Uh, spelled funny if you've never, never heard of their company. It's F-A-I-R-R-I-T-E, ferrite. And the ferrite one is super quality. And so uh, whatever, whatever ferrite mixture they have, yeah, it's really good. So, okay, I'm going to buy brand name from now on. Okay, uh, let's take a look at uh, some other things here. Let's take a look at... Um, Let's take a look at this. this here's, a, here's a ferrite core. And I'm gonna go through it, and it gives me a little bit, but then I'm gonna take a loop. I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna take one turn through the, uh, through the ferrite. And yeah, it got a whole lot better. And then I'm gonna take two turns through the ferrite. And yeah, I got a little bit better. So this also diminishing returns, right? So putting loops through things is good. All right, and so I want to show you some little ferrites now. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of them. I'm going to um, we're going to do a couple things here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, if I can get one out, they're super tiny. Oh man, come on, I can't use my tweezers today. There we go. All right, so can you see that? Uh, it's a little ferrite bead, a tiny little ferrite bead. So a oh, standard ferrite, standard ferrite bead. I'm gonna put it on this wire here. And let's see what a, let's see what a single, single ferrite bead does. And you can see it does a little bit. Uh, definitely, Definitely a little bit out there. Okay, so that's a standard standard bead. So it kills some high frequency. Sometimes that's all that you need to kill an oscillation or something. So, and it's probably better at you know one gigahertz. I'm only going out to 15 megahertz here. Uh, here's another here's another bead. Uh, this one is already on a, a lead, so it kind of looks like a resistor, but it's a piece of ferrite. And we can try that one out. Eh, it's a little bit better. It's about twice as long as the bead, um, so that makes sense. All right, so then we've got these guys. If you've seen these before, uh, these guys are ferrites with holes in them and there's multiple turns. So this one's got one, it has a, let's see, if you go through the core, it's got uh, one turns, two turns, three turns, four turns, five turns. Uh, five turns on the core and, oops. Yeah, he's really good. They're really, really good. So, yeah, I like these a lot. And you can actually, add, you know, there's, there's, there's a hole that's not being used on this one uh, because it's uh, uh, axial. But you can use all of the holes. Uh, let me see if I can find one that has all the holes used. If you come out the same side. I think this one. No, that one's only got two windings. Oh. I'm not prepared for you guys. I'm not prepared. Let me dig through. Here we go. Here's one that's got all the holes filled up. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six turns, effectively six turns. So let's put him on 
And Yowza, oops, let's see here. Very nice, very, very nice. All right, uh, so, uh, so kind of the, 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 the conclusion is, uh, really I wanted to know how good these were for RFI, right? These, these, uh, these yellow whites, right? And so let's put the yellow white th one turn and it doesn't do nothing, <laughs> nothing. All right, so let's put two turns, two turns through the yellow core. Let's see what that does. A little bit, <laughs> like, like a ferrite bead worth now. Let's put uh, three turns through and see what it does. Yeah, it, so these are not very good for this. Uh, so ferrite is a whole, whole lot better. So remember I had these little yellow ones and I actually wound one here. So this one has, uh, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six. This one has six turns. And so it's gotta be good, right? It's gotta be good. And yeah, it's not, it's just not. So I was shocked. Um, I thought this would be really good. So yeah, ferrite wins. Oh man, ferrite wins. Uh, here's a here's a cool choke. I don't know if you can really see that, see that on the, on the camera very well, but it's a, a ferrite core with a, with a it's, it, it's just a, a rod and then it has like a, maybe 30 turns something like that around the rod so for some type of like RFI. And uh, yeah, look at that. Wow, that'll kill things. So, yep, really, really good for putting in radios and stuff. Anyway, I'm learning a lot. I really haven't ever thought about this very, you know, very much. I just thought, yeah, you stick on a ferrite and away you go. We don't have to worry too much about it. But there's a huge variation in the quality of the ferrites. And um, uh, size doesn't always matter. Um, these iron core jobbers don't really seem to do a whole lot. So I'm not really, t not really too impressed with them. Now they might have some other application for some type of switching power supply where they're really, really good. Um, there may be some saturation problems with ferrite, um, the amount of power that you put through them. And I'm really not, I, I really don't really understand the subject very much, but I know that that can be a problem. So. Um, it could be that ferrite saturates fast and this stuff doesn't saturate, so it's better for some application. I think there's a big black art about cores. So I think there are some people that probably make their career on knowing about cores and nobody else cares enough to b bother learning and would we'll just say, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just go ask Joe, you know, <laughs> he knows everything about ferrites. Anyway, I hope that was fun. You learned something.